Hey guys, Sarge here from 100 Games 100 Days. Today, I want to show you exactly how Lotaro of Mapushi's abilities work in Civilization VI. We're going to go through some in-game examples to demonstrate their abilities and avoid any confusion or grey areas you may have about this Civ. So let's take a look. Let's start with Lotaro's leader ability, Swift Hawk. If a Mapuche unit defeats an enemy unit within the borders of the enemy city, that city loses 20 loyalty. Pillaging a plot in an enemy city causes it to lose 5 loyalty. In this example, you can see the city of Ziz has full loyalty and getting 20 loyalty per turn. I'm currently at war with Dido, so let's start attacking her units. Every time we attack a unit, it'll lose 20 loyalty in the city. Note that in order for this to work, the units have to be inside of Dido's territory to lose loyalty. So if I attack this scout, there is no loyalty lost within the city. So we'll continue attacking these units. And you can see we've taken the city down to zero. One thing to note, even though we have the city down to zero loyalty, if, even if we attack one more unit, the city won't turn into a free city. That's because you actually have to wait until the next turn and the city actually has to have negative loyalty to turn into a free city. So if I skip ahead to the next turn, we'll see that the city is still on zero because it did attack me a couple of times during that turn. If we, if we do another turn, we'll see that the city is now has 20 loyalty because it's getting 20 loyalty per turn. In this example, we have our own city surrounding the city of Ziz, and Ziz is now suffering negative loyalty. If we kill off five units to take their loyalty down to zero, and then shift enter to the next turn, this city will turn into a free city. The reason that happened was because we had cities around causing negative loyalty to the city of Ziz, therefore if there are no dogs in heaven. When a city is a free city, you can still take down the loyalty by killing the free city's units. Flipping cities to loyalty like this is a good way to gain error score. Because once they flip, you gain 2 error score for a free city joining your civilization. Just know that you will not get error score if you take over a free city with military. This ability also works against city-states. In this example, I'm at war with Brenda Brunei, so we can attack this warrior inside their territory, and the city lost 20 loyalty. Also, here's a quick example of how pillaging works. So this musketman is inside of Ziz's territory, there is a plantation on this tile, if I pillage this tile, it will take 5 loyalty off. Next up, Mapuche's civilization ability, Toki. This can be broken up into two abilities. Number one, all units trained in cities with an established governor gain 25% more experience in combat. Let's do it before and after. So we don't have a governor established inside of this city, our capital. And I'm going to attack, we are currently at war with Poland. So we're going to attack and see how much experience we get. So we got four experience for that combat just now. In this example, we have Governor Victor established in the city and we have our warrior built. So we should be getting 25 extra experience based on this ability. So if we attack this Poland warrior, we got five experience, so one extra experience than normal. In this example, I have a governor established, I have a barracks, and I'm also running oligarchy, which gives us 20% unit experience. So that's a total of 70% extra experience we're getting with all those bonuses applied because the barracks gives you 25%, oligarchy gives you 20%, and the toki ability gives you 25%. So let's attack this warrior and see how much experience we will get. Seven experience compared to the four that we got without any bonuses at all and the five that we got with just having the governor established. Obviously there's other bonuses you can get in the game like getting an armory, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you how much extra experience you can get if you apply additional bonuses. My appreciate second part of their ability is plus 10 combat strength bonus against civilizations that are in a golden age. As we can see here, Poland is in 
a golden age and we are currently at war with them. If I click on my warrior and just hover over one of their units, we can see that we're getting plus 10 versus civilizations in a golden age. This also applies to cities. My Prusier's unique unit is the Marlin Raider. Let's take a quick look at this unit in detail. This unit is a Mapuche unique renaissance unit. It has plus five combat strength bonus if within four hexes of friendly territory and pillaging costs one movement. This unit is unique in that it does not upgrade from any other units but does upgrade to a helicopter. It has 55 melee strength, four movement points, costs 250 production and has a base cost maintenance of four gold. If you compare it to a musketman, we can see that it has the exact same military strength that has an extra two movement. It is 10 extra production to produce and it has the same maintenance cost. If we compare it to a pike and shot, it has the same melee strength. The melon raider has an extra two movement. It is the same production cost and same maintenance cost. The melon raider is a light cavalry unit and it's interesting that it upgrades to a helicopter so it misses cavalry altogether. Unlike the Corsa, which upgrades to a cavalry and then upgrades to a helicopter. The one part of the Marlon Raider that might be a bit confusing is the fact that it says you get plus five combat strength if you're within four hexes of friendly territory. What does friendly territory mean exactly? In this example, I have my three Marlon Raiders here next to a bunch of Brazilian slingers that we're currently at war with. I am friends with Egypt, but we are not getting that plus five combat strength for being next to a friend. So what is friendly territory, you ask? Well, let me tell you. In this example, we are suzerain of this nearby city-state, and that is considered friendly territory because if we click on our Marlon Raider and hover over one of these slingers, we can see that we are getting plus five combat strength bonus within four hexes of friendly territory. So what is four tiles exactly? So say it does include their actual borders. So this tile counts as zero, one, two, three, four. So we can attack up to this slinger and get that plus five combat strength bonus, but we cannot get the plus five against this slinger because it is one, two, three, four, five tiles away from friendly territory. In this example, we are no longer suzerain of the city state. However, we are allied with Egypt. So because we are allied with Egypt, that counts as friendly territory. And we are getting the plus five combat strength for taking out this Brazilian slinger. Also, friendly territory also means your own land. So we are also at war with Byzantium here. If you click on our mail on radar, we are getting the plus five combat strength bonus because we are within one, two, three, four tiles of one of our cities. Also, just note that this bonus only applies to the Malon Raider. It would not count to any other unit. The last example I want to show you with the Malon Raider is pillaging cost one movement. In this example, I have two farms here in the city of Rio de Janeiro, and we are going to pillage them. Pillaging normally takes three movements. So we have a knight here with four movement. If we pillage this farm, it takes away three movement. With the Malon Raider, we pillage this farm. We are still left with three movement, and we can run away. The knight can only move one more movement. My Prusier's unique improvement is the Chemimol. It comes in at craftsmanship and it grants culture equal to 75% of the tile's appeal. Additional tourism after researching flight. The tile's minimum appeal must be breathtaking to place and it can be placed on most terrain types. In this example, in the city of Wente Mapu, we can see that we have one breathtaking tile that we can place at Chemimol. The culture we get is 75% because breathtaking tile is 4, 75% of 4 is 3, so we're getting a 3 culture. Something you may ask yourself is what happens to a chamomile if you build mines, quarries, or chop down forests, or any other item that takes appeal away from a tile? Well, let's find out. We have a few builders here, so let's get rid of some of these wood tiles. See what happens is that you just start losing culture. The, the tile stays there, but you just lose the culture because the, the tile is no longer breathtaking. It's it's just going down. So if you continue chopping out resources that give appeal, it just keeps going down. In this example, I just wanted to show you how powerful these Chemimals can really be in a game. So right now we have Liang established and we are using her parks and recreation ability to create city parks. City parks give two appeal to every adjacent tile. They cannot be built next to each other, but that can be built two tiles away. So we have a Chemimol here in the middle. We are getting one appeal from each woods tile. 
we're getting one appeal for being next to the river, so that's four in total. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we have the Eiffel Tower, which gives two appeals to every single tile inside of our empire, giving us a grand total of 12 appeal, which gives us nine culture. And if we have flight technology research, we're getting plus nine tourism. And there we have it. That's how Latoro of Mapushi's abilities work in Civ 6. If you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of the video, please give it a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. If you have any questions about their abilities, let me know in the comments below. And let me know if there's any future tutorials like this that you'd like me to cover. I really enjoy digging through the mechanics of the game to see how things work. Also, let me know what your thoughts on Mapushi are. I stream on Twitch regularly, links to all that and socials are in the description. Thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.